Hello, Keith Ruck here at BenchMachinery.org. So today is finally the day I've been waiting for. I'm going to get started on uh, doing a restoration on this uh, LeBlond 12-inch uh, heavy metal lathe uh, that I acquired a couple months ago. And I've been dying to get tear into this thing and really uh, check it out and uh, really start a good uh, restoration on it. So. Uh, in my last video, I did hook it up to power and just kind of test it, and make sure everything was running. And I was, uh, in case you didn't see that, uh, you know, we, we fired it up. Everything seems to be operational. Didn't see any uh, obvious uh, problems. Didn't hear any grinding noises, uh, gears uh, that sounded like they had a missing tooth or anything like that. So, uh, and uh, everything appeared to be pretty much working. Now, there's a few issues with this lathe that I know. It's, it's, uh, a part is off of it. I actually have the handle that goes here that reverses the feed. Uh, I'm not sure why it was taken off. I'm sure there was a problem with it, but I haven't gotten into that to figure it out. In fact, uh, this little uh, lever here is a, does the same thing as what the handle down there did, but this is something that the previous owner just kind of cobbled together to put on here so that he could reverse the feed. Uh, I don't really like this. It's, I want to get it back to original, so we'll probably take that off unless there's just some terrible problem with the handle down here that we can't fix it, but we'll get into that later. Uh, I haven't even started to investigate that yet. So uh, I thought what I'd do on this video is start out by just kind of doing a good inspection of the lathe uh, and getting an idea for really how good this is. Ideally, I would have done this when I purchased it, uh, but I didn't have I didn't bring along with me indicators and stuff to do this with. I kind of wish that I had. Uh, not that I suspect there's any major problems with this, but it'll be a good exercise for you guys to see. So first thing with any lathe, uh, particularly an older lathe, you know, you're going to have wear in it over, over time. And most of that wear is probably going to occur in the ways. So, you know, we've got these little ridges in here that the carriage rides on and goes back and forth on, uh, and the tailstock slides on. And over time, just in use, going back and forth, you get abrasives and stuff up underneath it, just the friction of the parts rubbing on each other, it's gonna wear down a little bit. Uh, you know, and the question is, is how much wear is acceptable? And you know, it really probably depends on what you're gonna do with the lathe as to what's acceptable. I've worked on some pretty worn out lathes and uh, you can do good work on a lathe that's pretty worn out. Now, the problem is, is if you got something long and you're trying to, to uh, get it the same diameter over two or three feet, you can run into some problems with that because a lot of times you may get some taper in there where the lathe bed has uh, worn down. But you know, most of your work is in pretty short uh, distances down here. Uh, and you know, the air that's in there is, is usually not great enough to cause a huge problem. But ideally you'll have one that's in good shape. So what we're gonna do is uh, I've got a dial indicator and I've got it set up over here. And I'm gonna zoom in on this and kind of show you how I'm gonna set this up and how we're gonna look at some measurements on here uh, to see how much wear is in this machine. So when I talk about the ways on a lathe, and this lathe is a little bit different than some. Most lathes are gonna have more of a V-shaped um, ways. This one has this kind of an unusual uh, trapezoidal type way. It's still a, a, a kind of a V, but not really. It's, it's a, instead of being a 60 degree, it's, 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 there's still a V here, it's just a steeper angle. Uh, and this was one of the design features of LeBlond. Uh, and of course they uh, touted it as being superior. Uh, whether that's true or not, I don't know, but you know, I kind of like this design. But what we're after here is looking to see how much wear has occurred in these ways. And what you need to do to measure that is not actually measure the ways themselves, but you need to measure the movement of the carriage across the ways. And you know, the carriage is covering you know, probably two feet on this. So there's a lot of averaging going out on here, which is good. Uh, but what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna work on this machine surface that's behind it. Uh, this was more than likely all machined at the same time and ground at the same time. But in theory, this uh, surface back here really doesn't have anything rubbing on it, so it should still be pretty close to the factory original. So uh, I've got my indicator set on here, and we're gonna basically bring the carriage all the way in. I'm gonna zero out my dial indicator, and we're just gonna sweep it down uh, the, the whole width here and see how much run out. So I'm actually going to re-zero that just because that's the loading the indicator. 
and you can see it is dropping off a little bit. So we're down about two thousandths, running pretty steady through here, it's raising back up, going back to zero. Now it's climbing pretty fast. And uh, let me move my camera so you can continue to see this. And now it's kind of stabled out again. So, all right, so as we move this across the entire width here, I've got about a total of about 10 thousandths uh, play in here. You know, it starts out at zero, it goes to, you know, just a little bit above, about two thousandths high, and then drops down about eight thousandths uh, low, um, or actually high, I guess. So there, there's a little bit of a belly in here. And uh, that is exactly what you'd expect. That's the exact kind of wear that you'll probably see on any machine. Because again, most of the time when you're running a lathe, you're doing short operations in here close to the chuck. So the vast majority of the wear is gonna happen in this area in here. The farther you get out toward the tailstock, typically the less wear there will be on the machine. So 10 thousandths, that sounds like a lot. And you know, quite honestly, I wish it was a lot less than that. But one thing you have to consider on this is that uh, is the direction that this uh, run out is in. So this run out is going up and down. And if you think about it, your cutter's gonna be on here, your cutter's gonna be coming in contact with the metal and the 10 thousandths is going up and down instead of in and out. So uh, that does not necessarily equate to having 10 thousandths run out in the direction that matters and going in and out from the lay because moving the cutter in now. Now as it rises up and down a little bit, you're gonna move that cutter uh, you know, off center, above and below center, which usually you're not dead on center anyway. Uh, and that will cause some slight variations in the diameter of what you're cutting, but 10 thousandths does not equate to actually 10 thousandths in diameter. Uh, it's gonna be much less than that. So, you know, yeah, that's where, but that's probably okay. Now, the next thing I wanna do is see how much play there is going in and out. So again, what I wanna do is I wanna find a, a reference surface that I can indicate off of, and in this case, I should be able to indicate off the face here. Uh, so I'm gonna move my indicator, we'll put it down on this face. Uh, there shouldn't be a whole lot of wear on that. Most of the wear is gonna be going straight down. Uh, so we're gonna, that's what we're gonna probably do. We could, if we wanted to, even uh, indicate off this inside face in here. There may be less wear there, but I think for right now, we're just gonna start and measure out here and see what kind of run out we get in and out. I've got my indicator set down here and, and I've actually ran it back and forth a couple of times and guys, there is some paint on here in some places. There's some, a um, little bit of surface uh, gunk on here in some places. So this is not a perfect uh, machine surface, but it should get us pretty close. And some of the variability that I'm seeing here, I think is accountable for the just some of the stuff on here, but uh, it's still not bad. So let's take it down through here and kind of give you an idea. So we start at zero, it immediately drops down to four right there. And I think that's actually where it dropped off that paint. So I think I'm gonna re-zero that. And drops in, we're down about minus four. It jumped there um, about six or seven. Now it's coming back up and now we're back to about zero. So again, there's a little bit of a belly even going in this direction here. So there you go, uh, it's not perfect. There's some wear in here, uh, mostly again in this sweet spot in the belly. And I, again, that's what you're gonna see on most lathes um, that are older lathes. Quite honestly, um, I think that what I'm seeing here is, is acceptable for the kind of work that I'll probably be doing on this machine. Uh, is it perfect? No. Uh, but as you use a machine, particularly an older machine, uh, you tend to kind of just learn it over time and you learn to compensate. And there's, there's tricks you can use, do to compensate for some of these things. Uh, for example, uh, most of the turning that I'll do will be in this area that's in here. And, and quite honestly, in this little smaller zone, uh, things are not terrible. When you run into a problem is when you're turning something long. Uh, and you'll probably, what you'll see is when you turn that, you'll get a little bit of a taper. And one thing you can do is you can actually adjust your tailstock. There's a uh, setting on here that you can move it side to side 
And by doing that, you can actually take a lot of that taper out. Now, when you do that and you go back into running something short, you probably have to readjust your tailstock. Uh, but there's ways to get around this, little tricks you can do uh, if you need to turn something that's, that's a very tight tolerance. But quite honestly, you know, on a lot of jobs over 30 inches, uh, if you got five or six thousandths run out, or not run out, but five or six thousandths taper, in most applications, that's probably within tolerance. Uh, I mean, let's face it, for most things that you're doing, you're probably looking at a plus or minus ten thousandths tolerance. Uh, and if you need something that's better, tighter than that, you can make uh, adjustments and uh, even get in here and do some hand polishing to kind of even things out. So, and that's what we do as machinists uh, to compensate for, for wear. So I'm happy with what I'm seeing. Uh, I think we got a keeper here. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is open up the top up here and uh, take a look at the uh, gear train in here and see what's going on in there. I undid the bolts on the top here and I uh, just lifted this off. You know, one thing that concerned me when I saw this lathe is that there's eight bolts in here, but there were only four screws in it. Uh, and the bolts that they put back in here were socket cap head screws and it looks like originally it was a shorter head, probably a flat head uh, screw. Um, rather than a socket screw. And so what that told me is, is that this thing has been into before. Someone has gotten into this. And um, anytime you see that, you have to ask yourself, well, why did they go in there? What, what were they worried about? What were they trying to fix? So, uh, you know, again, a little bit of concern. Uh, I also noticed that I wasn't getting any oil uh, showing in the, in the little sight glass down here, which you should see oil dripping when it's running. So I pull this thing open. And uh, the first thing I notice is that here's my oil line where the oil pump comes in. And I've actually ran this and the oil's pumping. And then you got this little uh, piece of tubing coming out and it's just kind of thrown up in here. Well, what this little piece of tubing right here did is it went down to that sight glass and that was what pumped the oil in there where you could see the oil pumping. Uh, so that's the reason I wasn't seeing any oil pumping is, is that they had disconnected this and not hooked it back up to the sight glass. So that makes me feel a little bit better. So looking at the gears, um, you know, I've, I can tell you that I'm not seeing anything that's real concerning. Um, I've inspected all the gears, all the teeth seem to be there. I don't see any missing or broken teeth. I don't see anything that looks like excessive wear in here. And uh, it appears to be working good. So I think what I'll do is fire this up and let you guys see it running with the gear train. You kind of see how the, the gear shift mechanism and all that works, which is kind of cool. All right, let's fire her up. And of course, nothing's going on right now. There's a the lever here, and when you pull this, it uh, there's a plunger that goes back up in the back here to the clutch that's inside the, the belt pulley. So you can see the belt pulley over there. Really can't see anything, but when you do that, you can see it kind of moving right here. That uh, engages the uh, the clutch and that's what starts the gear train turning and I'm not I don't want to run it at full speed here because it will uh, throw oil everywhere so oil is down there in the bottom uh, the, the gears are picking it up and just kind of throwing it up uh, and as far as the uh, oil pump goes the oil pump is only running when the gears when the machine is in, in gear and you can see this piece of tube and there's a hole there there's a hole here there's a hole here, there's one here, and basically that's throwing oil into key areas across the top of the machine. And then of course uh, the, the pipe will replumb down into the bottom uh, to uh, get our sight glass working. So anyway, I've looked at it. Uh, I've inspected all the, the gears in there. Everything looks good. Uh, so I'm not too worried about that. Now as far as changing gears on this, uh, there's two handles here on the front. Let me zoom you down real quick. So these here, and there's different positions that these go into. So let's go back up to the gear case and see what happens. So when you when you move that, you see it's moving this back here, and there's actually, what is there? There's four different places. So there's a, a four different size gears in the back back there, and depending on where you uh, put this, it's engaging in these four gears here. So you're getting a different gear ratio depending on which uh, spot you're in. So 
that's one range of movement. And then the other one, there's basically another uh, lever down here and it does the same type thing. It just engages into different gear options. And uh, between those two ranges, uh, you can get quite a uh, variation in speed. So basically there's um, four options on this lever, one, two, three options on this lever. So four times three is 12 different speeds. Pretty happy with what I'm seeing. So that's pretty much it for the basic lathe inspection here. Uh, you know, I can tell you I've already kind of gone over it. Uh, when we ran it before, we tried everything, made sure it was operational. Uh, you know, if you're going to look at a lathe to purchase, ideally it will be under power when you get there. And you can check all that out. Uh, in, in the case of me, when I went to look at this lathe, uh, the power had been cut to the building, so I really didn't have the option to look at it under power. So, uh, in that case, I'm just literally looking at the machine to see if I see anything that's major wrong with it. Things that are broken, things that are missing, uh, obvious problems that jump out at you. And, uh, you know, I could have brought an indicator and at least done the test as far as how much run or wear is in the machine. Uh, but that's really about all I could do. But um, ideally under power, then you can start checking things out and make sure things are working. Make sure you don't hear anything that sounds uh, unusual or whatever. I took a little bit of a chance on this machine, uh, although uh, the person that I was buying it from had seen it run. I was not, you know, the person that I was buying it from actually was dead, but so I didn't get to talk to him personally, but the people that I was dealing with were somewhat familiar with the machine uh, and, and, and I felt comfortable with those particular people that they were telling me the truth. Uh, so, you know, I felt pretty good about it and I feel even better about it now. So we got a good machine here uh, and you've got an idea of some things that you can look for if you go to look for a lathe uh, to, to purchase. So next step, and uh, this will probably be the next video, is we're going to literally start tearing this thing down, pulling parts off of it. Um, you know, I'm not going to strip it down to the last gear. You know, everything looks good in the headstock. We're not going to mess with it. There's no reason to. Uh, but cosmetically, this, this machine, you know, it's, it's, it's time to do something about it. And as long as I'm going to be doing some things to it, I want to make it look good. So we'll be pulling things off the outside, pulling all the handles off, probably just assembling the uh, carriage here, the tailstock, get it down to some components and uh, start stripping the old paint off of it and uh, doing some repainting and some other little things along the way. So that'll be what's coming up next. So thanks for watching in the first step of the lathe restoration. And uh, we're gonna get to actually working on it here uh, in the next uh, couple of videos.